Asus's Zephyrus G14 gets some awesome upgrades this year, like an OLED screen, a new level of battery life, all while being smaller, lighter, and more portable than ever before. But it's not all good news. Unfortunately, there are also some big problems that you need to know about. The G14 is available in platinum white or eclipse grey finishes. It's using a CNC aluminum chassis for the first time, which feels more solid compared to previous generations. Overall build quality feels excellent, and the texture just feels more metallic compared to any older G14. So keyboard flex is minor, and so is lid flex too, but I found the lid to be more wobbly compared to before. It can flop around for quite a while if you bump the table or move the screen. Despite the wobble, the hinges feel nice and smooth, even when ripping the lid open fast. The screen doesn't go all the way back anymore either, but it's enough for me at 135 degrees. The new G14 is smaller in every dimension compared to last year's version. It just feels more portable. It's lighter too, at less than 1.5 kilos or 3.3 pounds, increasing to 2 kilos or 4.5 pounds with the 180 watt charger included. Last year's model used a larger 240 watt charger, so this is another change that just makes the 2024 G14 a more portable package than ever before. The new design has what ASUS calls slash lighting on the lid. There are different effects you can set through software, including audio visualizations and even system notifications so you can get updates with the lid closed. I've got the highest configuration with AMD's Ryzen 9 8945HS processor, Nvidia's RTX 4070 graphics, and that new 14 inch OLED screen with G-Sync. But there are lower spec versions available for less money with the link below the video. The chiclet keyboard has one zone of either the RGB or white backlighting. All keys and secondary functions get lit up, but the lighting looks a little patchy. The tops of the F keys for instance are harder to see. Key brightness can be adjusted between three levels with a function and F2 or F3 shortcuts. And you can swap between three basic effects with the aura key on F4. The backlighting was harder to see on the platinum white model. The keycaps are 12% larger this year. The keys have 1.7mm of travel and and I liked typing on it. There's just a subtle clicky feel. The glass touchpad is fairly big, nice and smooth, and accurate to click with. The only thing I didn't like is it needs too much force to trigger a click once you get higher up. Unfortunately, there's still no fingerprint scanner in the power button. The G14 hasn't had that since the 2021 model. There are six speakers in total, including front facing and some underneath. They sound really good, better than most other laptops with plenty of bass while still sounding clear at higher volume. Speaking of sounds, it plays this one by default on boot. Luckily, you can disable it through either Armory Crate or the BIOS. The latency mon results were great, much better than what we were seeing from laptops last year. Ports are improved this year because they're closer to the back. ASUS were able to remove the air exhaust vents on the sides, but we'll see if this is a problem in the upcoming thermal testing. The left side has the power input at the back, which uses a custom rectangle connector instead of round now, HDMI 2.1 output, USB 4 Type-C port, USB USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A port and a 3.5 mm audio combo jack. The right side has a UHS 2 micro SD card slot and there are USB Type A and C ports on this side too, but 3.2 Gen 2 for both this time. So only the left Type C port has USB 4 support, and it's also only the only Type C port that can be used to charge the laptop with up to 100 watts. So if you wanted to both charge the laptop on Type-C and use USB 4 speeds for something else, then you're out of luck. But both Type-C ports have DisplayPort 1.4 support, so you can connect a monitor to either. And with Optimus on, the left Type-C port connects to the integrated graphics, but it connects to the discrete graphics if you turn Optimus off. The right Type-C port on the other hand always connects directly to the Nvidia discrete graphics, whether Optimus is on or off. HDMI always connects directly to the NVIDIA graphics too, and we confirmed it could run our LG B9 TV at 4K 120Hz 12-bit with G-Sync. Getting inside requires removing 11 TR6 screws of three different lengths, so keep track as you remove them. For some reason, two on the back are covered by these rubber bits, 
but they're easy to remove. In last year's G14, the front right screw only came out a bit and helped lift the bottom panel up, making opening easier. The 2024 one doesn't do this anymore, but the pry tools I use, linked below, were able to open it up easily enough. Inside we've got the battery down the front, Wi-Fi 6E card just above on the right, and single M.2 2280 slot on the left. The speeds from the installed 1TB PCIe Gen 4 SSD were decent, but not amazing. The read speeds from the micro SD card slot were great though, basically maxing out my V90 card. Wi-Fi speed was also excellent, one of the best results I've ever measured. And faster compared to last year's G14, despite the fact that it had the same MediaTek Wi-Fi card. My test setup is exactly the same, so I can only assume they've somehow improved antenna placement. Since 2020, the G14 has had one memory slot for upgrades, but that's been removed this year in favour of the smaller design. It's available with 16 and 32 gig options, and although 16 gigs is still okay for most games, it's getting difficult to justify for a machine you'll probably want to use for years, so probably worth getting the 32 gig option. On the plus side, soldered memory means faster LPDDR5X 6400. I removed half a point for the change from Phillips head screws to the less common TR6, and removing the memory slot takes off a full point. So in that regard, it's worse compared to any other G14 laptop so far. The G14 is powered by a 4-cell 73 watt hour battery. We can enable battery care mode through the Myasu software, which is separate from Armory Crate, and this limits the charge level to 80% to help improve the battery's lifespan. Panel power saver is enabled by default, which automatically lowers the screen's refresh rate to 60Hz when you unplug the charger to save power. This is why the screen flashes black and it goes back to 120Hz when you plug back in. Battery life was extremely good, almost lasting for 11 hours in the YouTube video playback test, and over 2 hours in the gaming test. This puts it well above most other laptops tested, including last year's G14, which actually has a slightly larger battery inside. Let's check out thermals next. The G14 has 3 fans inside now, up from last year's 2, but one of those fans is where the memory slot used to be. There there are heat pipes shared between the CPU and GPU with thermal grizzly liquid metal on the CPU and paste on the GPU. There are holes directly above the air intake fans, and air gets exhausted out of the back. There are not any air exhaust vents on the sides this year, despite the slimmer design. The rear lift up design is also missing this year, so it's harder for fresh air to get in underneath. ASUS's Armory Crate software allows us to change between different performance modes, which from lowest to highest are silent, performance, turbo, and manual. Both turbo and manual modes apply this overclock to the GPU, but only manual mode lets you customize it. Manual mode also lets you control CPU and GPU power limits, temperature limits, and gives you some control over the fan curves. Whenever we've tested manual mode, all power and temp sliders were maxed out with fans on 100% speed for best results. The internal temps were fine when just sitting there idle, considering the fans were off. The rest of the results are from combined CPU and GPU stress tests, which aim to represent a worst case full load scenario. The internal temps are all running cool in this workload, regardless of the performance mode in use. It barely got warmer with the lid closed, so no problems if you want to dock it. The cooling pad I test with, linked below, didn't make a difference though. Only running the fans at full speed was able to lower temps, but you just don't need to, considering that worst case, we're below 80 degrees Celsius. Us. This is a great result, so removing the air exhaust vents from the side doesn't seem to matter. These are the clock speeds during the same tests. There's not really a difference between performance, turbo, and manual modes, which explains why the temperatures weren't that much different either. Checking the power levels explains why. The processor is limited to just a 12 watt TDP when the GPU is under load, which is quite low. Definitely one of the lowest I've ever seen, which is why the 8 cores of the Ryzen 9 8945HS were averaging 2.5 GHz in performance, turbo, and manual modes. Though to be fair, those are decent clocks for the lower power level, so I'm wondering if the 8945HS is binned well. Clock speeds only went higher in silent mode, and that's because the CPU was able to run with more power, but at the expense of less GPU power. The Nvidia control panel says that this is a 90 watt RTX 4070, and that's what we're running at in turbo and 
manual modes. So not what I'd consider to be a full powered 4070. This behavior is confirmed in a game test. Performance, turbo, and manual modes were all limited to 12 watts on the CPU so that the GPU can sustain 90 watts. And this mix seems to be working. The G14 has a high 2880 by 1800 resolution, so it makes sense to prioritize GPU power for gaming. Though considering these frame rates, you'll definitely want to make use of features like DLSS. For context, last year's thicker G14 was able to run between 100 and 125 watts. So the 2024 G14 sacrifices some GPU power for the thinner design. I don't think this is too bad though, because based on my own testing, there's only a slight difference in game FPS between running the RTX 4070 at 90 and 100 watts, with 100 watts offering just 1.5% more FPS in a 10 game average. The CPU can use more power if the GPU is idle, like in Cinebench. Up to the mid 70 watt range was seen, but with Ryzen processors, adding more power results in diminishing returns faster when compared to Intel processors. This explains why the multi-core score isn't changing too much between the different performance modes. Although game performance isn't great in silent mode, as we just saw, CPU only performance is still good. Now let's not forget that the 8945HS is essentially just a renamed 7940HS from last year. They're both Zen 4 chips with the same core count, same thread count, same clock speeds, and same amount of cache. The only difference is that 8945HS has a better NPU for AI work. In turbo and manual modes, I actually found last year's G14 with 7940HS to perform better, both in single and multi-core performance. But that's because the 2023 version was able to send more power to the processor. This results in the 8945HS coming in a little behind the other Zen 4 laptops that I've tested. So don't be fooled by the name looking like a higher number. It's meaningless in terms of performance difference. Now, to be fair, the new 2024 version of the G14 is also smaller than those other Ryzen laptops too. Asus have prioritized a smaller laptop this year, but the expense is less performance. Granted, not too much. It just depends if that's a trade-off you're willing to make. CPU performance lowers if we unplug the charger and instead run off of battery power. It's ahead compared to last year's G14 now, but it's difficult to say how much of this is due to generational laptop differences, battery chemistry, or just straight up silicon lottery luck. Regardless, this is a decent result compared to the same selection of laptops. Most laptops I test are in the low 30 degrees Celsius range on the keyboard at idle, and the G14 was in line with this and felt cool. It's warmer in the middle with a stress test running. The middle of the keyboard only felt warm, not hot. The back was hotter, but you don't need to touch there. The higher performance mode was fairly similar, but the fans are louder now to compensate for the extra power. Turbo mode was a little warmer in the center of the keyboard. Board, but it's still only a bit warm. The left and right sides are quite cool as air goes through the keyboard. Actually, just for some context, here's last year's G14 in the same workload in turbo mode. The center of the keyboard is around 10 degrees Celsius warmer, so the 2024 model is a nice improvement in that regard. It's possible to get the 2024 model even cooler in manual mode with the fans maxed out, but this makes it much louder too. Let's have a listen. The fans were off most of the time at idle. They briefly turned on from time to time, which is why I've got two results, but they were still quiet. The fans get louder in the higher performance modes, as expected. And although the cooling pad didn't really lower the temperatures, it was able to reduce the fan noise by around four decibels. It's fairly loud in manual mode with the fans maxed out, but as we saw earlier, there's no real benefit to doing this as the internals aren't hot enough to justify the extra volume. And and considering that the internal temps were cool, I've got to assume that the main reason they're limiting the processor to just 12 watts with the GPU also active is to keep the exterior cool, because last year's G14 could feel pretty hot when under load. The fans on this one did sound a bit higher pitch as well, which might be annoying, but it didn't really annoy me because I always wear headphones. 
All right, we really need to talk about the screen because this is the first time ASUS have given an OLED panel to the G14. The colors look excellent, as expected from an OLED panel. It's not super bright or anything, but above 400 nits in SDR mode isn't bad. And this puts it in line with other OLED panels that I've tested recently. You've really got to go for mini LED if you want much brighter. Backlight bleed doesn't exist, because black on an OLED turns off the pixels. It's a glossy display, but we noticed less obvious reflection compared to previous OLED laptops. Screen response time is another area where OLED really shines. On average, we're looking at less than a millisecond for transitions to occur, which is super fast compared against non-OLED gaming laptops. This makes it faster when compared to last year's G14, but honestly, 4 milliseconds is such a great result anyway that I doubt most people will notice the difference. The total system latency is the amount of time between a mouse click and when a gunshot fire appears on the screen in Counter-Strike 2. The fast OLED screen contributes to it getting such a fast result here, but that said, other laptops without OLED are quite close. The G14 has a MUX switch, so you can turn Optimus on and off through ASUS's Armory Crate software, but that needs a reboot. You don't have to do that though, as it has advanced Optimus, so you can use the NVIDIA control panel to enable or disable Optimus without rebooting. The G14 also has G-Sync, which is a new feature available in 2024 OLED panels. Gaming laptops with OLED before this year were not able to support G-Sync. Like other ASUS laptops with OLED screens, the software has some OLED care options to help reduce the chance of burn-in over time. There's a 1080p camera above the screen. It has IR for Windows Hello Face Unlock, and mic quality is way better compared to last year. Here's how the camera and microphones look and sound, and this is what it sounds like while typing on the keyboard. And as you can see, there is a little bit of screen wobble when doing this. Now let's find out how well the new G14 performs in games. We've tested with these settings for best results. Cyberpunk 2077 was tested with our own custom test run, and I've got the G14 shown by the red highlight. At 1080p, it's one of the lowest results from an RTX 4070 laptop, basically matching MSI's similarly sized Stealth 14 from last year. Razer's Blade 14 with the same GPU was 12% ahead though. I confirmed that the CPU was still limited to 12 watts with this game running, just like the stress tests earlier, but it doesn't seem to be limiting the 1080p performance as much as I thought. There's a much smaller difference between those 14-inch laptops at the higher 1440p resolution Solution. But the G14 was still one of the lower 4070 results, and not too different compared to cheaper 4060 laptops. Red Dead Redemption 2 was tested with the game's benchmark. Again, at 1080p, it's closer to the bottom of the 4070 laptops tested, but the difference isn't that big. And to be fair, the G14 is smaller compared to many of those. It's not doing so well at 1440p, actually getting beaten by RTX 4060 laptops now. Look, the difference difference is only minor, and honestly within the margin of error range, but it just goes to show that it might not be worth spending more money for the 4070 in this year's G14. That said, it does still offer an increase compared to last year's G14 with 4060. It's a similar deal in control at 1080p. The G14 is one of the lower RTX 4070 results, and not too different when compared to RTX 4060 laptops, like last year's cheaper G14. And then it's the same deal at the higher 1440p resolution as well. Here are the 3D mark results for those that find them useful. Now for some content creator tests. Adobe Premiere and DaVinci Resolve were similar to the games, one of the lower 4070 results and close to the 4060 laptops. Adobe Photoshop was a bit better, but this test depends more on single core performance than the GPU. 4070s in Blender are only a little ahead of the 4060, regardless of laptop size. The BIOS looks nice, but there's almost no customization available. Just the basics and no tuning of any kind. Come on, what are you doing ASUS? It's especially bare when compared to other brands like MSI, Dell or Lenovo. Linux support was tested with an Ubuntu 23.10 Live CD. By default, the keyboard, touchpad, camera and Wi-Fi all worked. 
Speakers kind of worked, but were super quiet like I was hearing an internal speaker. But I couldn't change it in the sound settings. Keyboard shortcuts for adjusting screen brightness and volume worked, but keyboard brightness and effect controls did not work. Pricing and availability will change over time, so check the link below the video for updates and current sales. And if the G14 does have a good sale, we'll be sure to add it to our gaminglaptop.deals website. We update that every day to include all of the latest sales, so make sure that you check it out regularly to save money on your next gaming laptop. At the time of recording, the configuration I've tested goes for $2200 US dollars on ASUS's website, but it was on Best Buy a few days ago for $2000. Not sure why they removed it. Again, availability will change over time, so you'll have to refer to the link below the video. For some context, last year's G14 with 4070 but half the RAM goes for $150 to $350 less without a sale. So you're definitely paying a premium for this newer model, which arguably is a step backwards in some regards. The 2024 G14 with lower tier 4060 and 16 gigs of RAM apparently goes for $1600 US dollars, but last year's version is $550 less on sale at the moment, which is why we've got it on the gaminglaptop.deals website. Without the sale though, it's the same price as the newer 2024 model. Ultimately, I don't have a problem with ASUS offering this version of the G14 as an option. If you're someone that likes OLED and wants a more portable, smaller and lighter version at a higher cost, then here's a new option for you. But on the other hand, if you prefer more upgrade options, slightly better performance but a slightly bigger laptop that's still quite portable as it's 14 inches, then last year's G14 isn't going anywhere and will still be available for less money. For most people, I don't think that it's worth spending more money on this newer G14, unless it has a great sale or has something that you really want to spend the extra money on. But if you do go for this new model, as much as your wallet's gonna hate it, you probably want to go for the 32 gig RAM option. I've actually been told that some regions might not even have the 16 gig option for sale, which might be for the best as it'll keep this laptop running longer and help reduce e-waste. If you're after something with way more upgradeability that's far less likely to be e-waste anytime soon, then check out this video next where I've tested Frameworks Laptop 16. Yeah, it's a bigger 16 inch gaming laptop, but I mean you can take out the GPU and swap it, as well as way more cool things. I'll see you in that video next.